14. Balance each reaction below and write a cell schematic representing the reaction as it would occur in a galvanic cell. Okie dokie. So it seems like we just have to take this equation and balance it. And then we just have to write a cell schematic. Now a schematic is, is basically just like a chemical drawing. So it basically is another way of taking this equation and stating it with brackets. Now we're in a galvanic cell, which means that we are happening spontaneously. So it's a spontaneous reaction in which we do not need any additional energy to make this reaction run. Now, in order to balance these equations, and by just starting off, what we should do is, especially if they're asking for schematics, we should um, break these into their half reactions. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, pick the substances that go together. So we have aluminum solid. Seems like this is going to go with the Al3 plus aqueous because that's um, the same element. And then we have the zirconium Zr4 plus. That's going with the Zr solid. So I'm just going to write those down. Doesn't matter which one you start with. So we have Al solid yields Al3 plus, and that's aqueous. And then we have the zirconium, the ZR, ZR4 plus, and that's aqueous. And this will go to the ZR solid. Now, let's first balance these half reactions. Now, it seems like the elements are balanced. One Al on the left side, one Al on the right, one zirconium on the left, one zirconium on the right. The only thing that needs to be balanced is these charges. Now it seems, let me just put this over here. It seems that this aluminum, it has no charge in the upper right hand corner. So that's a zero charge. So this is an overall zero charge. And the aluminum had a three plus, so it's a plus three. Zirconium had a four plus, so the overall charge is a plus four. And the ZR is an overall charge of a zero because I didn't see anything in the upper right hand corner. Remember, you always want to add electrons to the more positive side because electrons are negative. So we can only go down in number. So from a zero to a plus three, it seems like a three is more positive. So I know that I'm going to have to add electrons on my left side here. Actually, that's my right side. I still don't know my left from my right, but let's keep going. How many electrons? It's whatever the top number is going down to the bottom number. So if you think about it on a number line, you need three jumps to go from a three to a zero. So I'll add the three electrons. And then from here, since I have a plus four and a zero, plus four is obviously the higher number. So I'm going to add electrons on the left side. How many? Well, from four to zero, that's four jumps. And this is a good check because your electrons should be on opposite sides. If you have your electrons on the same side for the two equations, go back. Something happened. But now this is a good step of the, you know, good stage to figure out if they ever ask you what the oxidant is and what the reductant is. The oxidant, AKA the reducing agent, is always the one that is undergoing oxidation. So oxidant, oxidation. This is always going to become more positive because you're losing electrons. And you could tell which one is the oxidizing, um, which one is undergoing oxidation or is the oxidant because you have electrons on the right side of your equation. So out of these two equations, this one has the electrons on the right side. And it's only going to be your two starting materials that are either the oxidant or the reductant. It's never your products. So you don't even have to worry about those. So since it's the aluminum that got you those three electrons on the right side, the aluminum, the Al solid, 
is going to be your oxidant, and that means that the other one has to be your reductant. But remember, reductant, or oxidizing agent, is the one that's undergoing reduction. you gaining electrons. And those are always the electrons on the left side. And there they are. Zr4 plus got you there. So that is the uh, reductant. So that's a good side side step question. So we'll box that off. But now we still need to balance the equation. So let's do it. Now, before we do that, I think we should actually write the cell schematic. I only say that because cell schematics do not care about how many you have. So if you put like coefficients in the front of these, um, you know, your substances, your cell schematics are never going to have those coefficients. So it's actually easiest to have this equation down, your two full half reactions, and then do your schematics. Your schematic is going to look like this. Maybe I'll just put that, I guess I'll put that over here. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so your cell schematics, the drawings, are going to have basically these little brackets. You'll have a single bracket, a double bracket, and then a single bracket. This just represents by which one is undergoing oxidation and which one is undergoing reduction. The anode is always going to have oxidation happen at it in your galvanic cells. So this means you could think about it as anox. On the flip side, reduction is always going to be at the cathode. You could think about this as red cat or cat red. So since we already discussed oxidant and reductant, and we said that electrons on the right side is oxidation, we know that the first equation is going to be our oxidation equation. And that's going to happen here. The other one has to be reduction. So maybe I'll just move this over a little bit. Whoop. Just so that I have room to say reduction. And this equation is going to go on this side. So your cell schematic is what your first substance was going into your second substance for your oxidation. So for your oxidation, we had this going into Al3+. So we have Al solid, bracket, and then say what it became. Well, it became Al3+, aqueous. Now double bracket. The reduction one, Zr4+, plus went into Zr solid. So that's what I'm going to write down, Zr4+. Plus Bracket went into ZR solid. And now just make sure that you do you need a platinum catalyst? You only need a platinum catalyst if you don't have a solid on a blue or a red side. But in here, I have a solid on the blue side, my oxidation side, so that's good. And on my reduction side, I have a solid, so we're good. So here is one of the answers. Here's my cell schematic. Now all I have to do is balance this equation. Well, so maybe I will, maybe I'll just move this on over a little bit. And I'm not going to grab that zero, so I have to do it again. Here we go. Oh boy. Third time's the charm, right? Let's try. Christina, can you do it? There we go. And I'll put this up here. Because now... If we want to get these two equations together, the electrons have to be the same. Well, I have three electrons on top, and I have four electrons on the bottom. How are they going to be the same? They have to be the same by multiplication. So I always think of what is the next number that these have in common? Well, the next number is 12, right? I could take the first equation and times it by 4, that will get me 12 electrons. And then I could take the bottom one and times it by 3. But if I do that, I have to be fair. I have to times everybody in the first one by 4. And I have to times everybody in my second one by 3. 
So let's just do that. And maybe what I'll do is I will bring this a little bit down. There we go. So the first equation now is going to be four aluminum solids, which will yield into four Al3 plus aqueous plus 12 electrons. And once I have that, I'm just going to exit this out because we don't need it. Exit out, cross it out, tomato, tomato. Then let's just do the second one. We now have 12 electrons plus three ZR4 pluses aqueous. And then I have three ZR solids. And now I can get rid of this equation. And now, since I now have the same number of electrons, 12 electrons and 12 electrons, I can now add these two equations together. And maybe if I can, what I will do is I will actually move this. I think I can move this. There you go. So now everything that's on the left side stays on the left side. Everything that's on the right side of the equation stays on the right side and those electrons will cancel. So I have four Al solid plus the three Zr4 plus aqueous. And that will yield the four Al3 plus aqueous plus the three ZR solids, and that is the other answer. So this is the balance equation, and this is the cell schematic, and we are done. Whoop, whoop. Thank you for tuning in. I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all are doing well out there. Let's keep studying hard. Um, I'm rooting for you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and yeah, I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.